Hey guys, I made a post in the uh, Facebook pages recently, uh, earlier today actually, about a thermometer monitoring system that I've um, built up. You can see here, I'll zoom in a little bit, you can see here, that's the finished panel. This is actually being viewed uh, through the Wi-Fi monitoring software. Um, you can see there that I've done nine thermometers that I've extended uh, the probes of to into different systems. Uh, you can see there on the left hand lower corner a maximum minimum thermometer like I've been using um, for a while and the moisture reading you can see there 77% that's just the air at that point so that that maximum minimum one has a probe on it so it measures inside and outdoor um, temperatures and so um, I didn't extend that um, probe because it was long enough to go where I needed it to go. In the top left hand corner you can just see a clock that I bought for about six uh, Australian dollars because uh, I wanted to be sure that the feed that I was looking at was actually a current feed because uh, that's one of the, the slight flaws in the system. It's sometimes a bit um, hard to realise what you're looking at. So anyway, I decided I wanted a temperature monitoring system because sometimes we go away for a few nights and it's peace of mind uh, in the hotter times for me to know that the worms are cool enough. We find about 30 degrees Celsius is the limit in the, in the bedding for Africans to be happy. Uh, at about sort of 29 degrees Celsius they start floating on the top of the bedding looking for some air. Um, about 31 degrees Celsius they start leaving the um, bedding and the euros are much the same at, at about that 31, 32 degrees Celsius euros will start uh, even coming out during the, the daytime and trying to get across the um, concrete shed floor. But anyway, so after I decided I wanted something like this, I asked around the Worm Farming Alliance and someone did have uh, a unit that was similar. It was more expensive. It was actually, from what I understand, a, a Wi-Fi connected temperature probe that you can put where you want it as long as it's in Wi-Fi range. And then you can set those up to SMS uh, your mobile or email you when they drop out of a certain set temperature range. And after looking around at many options, I decided on this simpler Wi-Fi connected video monitor that I'm showing you here today. And I went this way as I had a lot of systems that I wanted to monitor. And um, to buy the individual monitors would have cost me, uh, for an individual monitor, about the, the same price I paid for this whole system that I'm showing you today. Which has uh, cost me uh, less than about 60 US dollars when I added it all up again this afternoon. So I'll show you the next slide here, zoom in a bit. This is the camera that I bought. Uh, I paid a little bit more for all of these things because they were in Australia already. If I'd have wanted to wait four to six weeks from to come from China, they would have been about half this price. And the camera was the major cost of the system. As you can see there, it's 36 Australian dollars, which is about 25, 27 US dollars. So what this is, it's it's a Wi-Fi connected camera that you can log into anywhere in the world that you've got an Android or Apple device. They've got an app for the phones and tablets and they've also got a PC program. And again, note that if you're going to try and do something like this, that this camera relies on receiving the Wi-Fi connection from your router to work. So if, if, if it's so far away you haven't got Wi-Fi, you'll have to look at Wi-Fi extenders or something like that. Luckily for me, my shed's close to the office where the router is. Um, thanks for the tip, um, Kwok Hai. Um, I've um, uh, looked at um, the Wi-Fi signal in the shed where I wanted to mount the panel. Uh, with my mobile phone so you can just look on your mobile phone to see if your mobile is receiving your Wi-Fi from home. And to the next slide. So this is actually the PC viewing software. And you can see there you can mount multiple cameras to this software. Um, you can see the um, the panel as it as as I can see it in the PC software. The app's a little bit different how it looks. Um, so what you can see there, probably on the bottom of the screen, there's all these buttons. Basically 
uh, you, you can, as I understand it, you can set it up with um, motion detector software as well, like as a burglar type thing. When someone walks around your shed or something, it trips the um, recording software on. Um, I haven't set anything up like that, so I'm not really sure of that functionality. But the app, uh, either from the app or the PC, you can manually take screen, single screenshots or start a recording. Uh, interestingly, you can also talk through the device like an intercom to anyone working in the shed and it's quite uh, clear. I can um, quite easily talk to my wife uh, to and from the shed um, to uh, whatever device I'm viewing the, the system on. And so these are the thermometers uh, that I ordered. I ordered uh, a five pack. Again, I paid a little bit more because they're in Australia and I was hot to trot on, on getting the system up. So I paid uh, maybe twice what I'd get from China. I ordered a set of five first just to be sure that I could extend the probes like I'd researched. And once uh, I was assured of that, then I ordered the second five to come. So I actually had, actually got 10 of these. You'll note they work on the little button batteries, uh, but being just a single display, I suspect they'll last a while, and I ordered some spare batteries from China to, to come in in a month's time or something. So they're just simple one readout thermometers, and they've got a little um, probe on the end of a wire. Uh, the wire is about a metre or three feet long. I'll just flick over to the next slide. And so this is the mask, I suppose um, I'm calling it, that I designed for the display. And how I transcribe that is I basically, I, I designed this in a PowerPoint and then printed that out on a piece of A4 paper and then attached the A4 paper to a piece of ply and marked out where each of the temperature uh, gauges was going to go. And, uh, and then very carefully cut them out and, and sanded the holes out until they would accept the, uh, exactly the, the temperature unit to go in there. So, let's just check my notes here. Okay, that's it for that section. So what I'm showing you here is, is after I extended the probes, and again, I, I didn't invent extending probes. I researched it on the internet and, and found quite a few instances of people with uh, like aquariums or lizard um, lizards as pets or whatever where they've extended these simple thermometers. And basically, you just need to use a good quality wire. I first trialled a uh, light-duty electrical cable. And, uh, and then trialled this um, heavy duty speaker wire and it gave me the same result as the electrical cable. So you can see here what I'm actually doing is uh, what I call benchmarking. So after I've extended the um, wires, I've hooked them back up temporarily. You can see under the one that says R, there's some little wires and a bit of tape sticking out. So after I put the extensions on, I benchmarked them back against R. The, the one with R written on it is my reference thermometer. I picked a thermometer that was seemed to be close to the large in-out thermometer that you can see. And I haven't extended that R or reference thermometer. And I'm using it to benchmark all my other thermometers after they've been extended. So after they're extended, I put the, you can see in the top right hand corner there, I've got some of the little probe buttons sticking out there. I, I put all the probes in a pile with a weight on it and then let the temperature reading settle down. And then I read how many degrees um, difference there is between them. And what I found was um, a um, 10 metre or 30 feet extension would only change the, uh, it would reduce the, reading on the thermometer by 0 0.3 degrees and I did uh, I had to do one like that and one was a bit shorter and then I did a fair few that were um, three meters long and that's only a 0 0.1 degree um, reading difference that it gives you by putting that extra cable on. So I'll go to the next slide here. So what you can see here is the back of the panel and so where the um, cables for where the probe wires were um, cut uh, I stripped back the insulation on the outer 
the outer insulation and then strip back some of the insulation on the um, two wires that are inside that cable. And then I did what, when I was an apprentice, we called it tinning um, the wires. So I used solder, I um, dub doubled the wires over and then used solder to create a good contact point on the end of that um, wire so that when I screwed the screws of the screw clamps into it, it had something good to bite on. And that also protects the wire from, from getting rusty or anything later. So where I joined the extensions, um, the speaker wires onto the probe ends, what I did was use solder and soldered the wires together and then put several layers of heat shrink tubing in place to protect and strengthen the joins, both to protect them from the moist atmosphere of, of worm farms and, and to physically protect them from, from damage of being pulled out accidentally or whatever. So I've got, I think I put uh, a, a piece of heat shrink over each cable join and then a larger piece of heat shrink over that and then another bigger piece over that with a tail, um, smaller piece hanging down the um, actual probe end. What you see here is, is a picture from my phone of the setup. So I had to, to um, design and build a um, uh, big um, piece of wood over the top to hold the um, camera. You can see the camera in the sort of left hand top corner of the thing there. And what I had to do, I found, is I had to buy a um, cheap uh, 7 watt LED downlight from the hardware store. The uh, LCD display on the thermometers just wasn't good enough, even with the infrared capability of the camera. Um, this light has to stay on all the time so I can log in and read the display, but at uh, 7 watts uh, power I'm, I'm happy to pay that bill. And so again this is the finished display. Um, viewed and screenshot via the uh, internet monitoring software. Um, so as you can understand, I, I don't want to go into the um, nitty gritties of what all my systems are that this, this is monitoring. Um, I've got a lot of um, private commercially sensitive information that uh, I want to keep to myself. Uh, I do um, release a lot of information to you guys through uh, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, but there's uh, certain things where I sort of really have to draw the line and um, it's taken me several years to develop my systems and I sort of don't really want to um, just give them away for free. But anyway, so there's the, the whole um, setup and uh, so it cost me about uh, US $60, um, uh, Australian 80 odd dollars maybe, uh, 75 I don't know, I didn't exactly add it up. But uh, again, if you wanted to wait for it all to come from China, uh, you could probably do it for like 25 US dollars or something. Uh, there is a lot of time involved, of course, um, but uh, I think over, over the future, it'll um, pay off for me just as peace of mind when I'm uh, not home or when I'm away for a day or whatever, I can log in and, and check everyone's happy. All right, thanks very much for watching, guys.